Despite being the most dominant team that Formula 1 has ever seen, it seems things are not okay at Oracle Red Bull Racing. The Austrian team could never count on much support from F1 media in itself, but with what's going on recently, it appears that Red Bull is battling some inner demons as well as the snake pit that is Formula 1. From a team principal that is investigated within the company, controversial comments from the most important advisor and a three-time world champion who's openly critical about the sport and has no reservations about cutting his F1 career short if it's no longer fun for him. This is why I think that Red Bull will never be the same again. I'm Wimbo, here's three seconds to leave a like. Horner News recently came out that Christian Horner was to be investigated for inappropriate behavior towards a female member of staff. It was reported by The Telegraaf, a newspaper from my country. The Telegraaf is not a tabloid type of paper that is popular in the UK, but it's not the best paper in the Netherlands either. Horner has told Eric van Haren that the claim was false. As often, when Red Bull is the subject of negative news, everyone and their mother jumped on it, and the wildest accusations were made up, especially making the accusations in question of a sexual nature was trending, even going as far as inappropriate pictures being sent by Horner. This was later set straight, it was made public that the concerns were of controlling and coercive behaviour by the Englishman. A hearing from the Red Bull company has taken place in London on the 9th of February. The conclusion of this matter could take weeks. Obviously, a large group is calling for his resignation. Marco A while ago, Dr. Helmut Marco enraged the F1 community by stating that Checo Perez was less consistent because he was South American, which he later apologized for. Helmut Marco is known for his blunt responses to his drivers and gets criticized all the time for promoting drivers whom he believes in and having to drop drivers who underperform. He was criticized for dropping Nick de Vries after 10 races, but also for giving him that seat in the first place. That Daniel Ricciardo was placed in that seat was a big factor in getting Visa on board, no doubt. But that is conveniently forgotten about as dunking on Helmut is more important. People believe he's getting too old for his job and obviously people are calling for his resignation. Verstappen Sprint weekends, street tracks, big shows before the races and the ever-growing race calendar are all things the three-time world champion Max Verstappen is critical about whenever he's asked about it. Certain people find this ungrateful and just don't understand why he's talking down on the sport that gave him everything. He loves racing but his outbursts can be explosive when things don't go the way they should. He never sugarcoats things and he's very straightforward. This is a bit of a contrast between him and champions who say exactly the things people want to hear, but I can usually appreciate his Dutch directness, even if it makes me cringe sometimes. Many times he has explained that he's not in the sport to break records or to do it until he's not competitive anymore. He's not going to be in F1 until he's 40 like Lewis Hamilton or Fernando Alonso. He wants to shine in other types of racing while he's still fit. He wants to own a team in endurance racing and he wants a family with Kelly. To me, this all makes sense and I hope he has the discipline to do all these things. The opposing fans say he's a spoiled brat and obviously a large group is calling for his resignation. How will Red Bull look after 2028? Chances are that Christian Horner won't come out of the investigation with his job in place. Replacement names have been circulating from Oliver Minchlov to promoting Jonathan Wheatley. It was thought for a long time that Adrian Newey and Christian Horner were tied together and that if one goes, the other will too. But I've also read that Newey doesn't mind staying at Red Bull without Horner. The next weeks will be exciting to see what happens. Another angle that has been suggested and one that I believe in is that there's a power struggle going on after Dieter Matajic died. Marco doesn't want to give up on the vision that Matajic had and Horner wants more control as he's overseeing the team and the Red Bull powertrains. I did hear of this last season when Horner made suggestions of Marco retiring and Helmut Marco reacting that Mr. Horner doesn't decide when he walks away. He signed a new deal right after that. It is all well possible that Dr. Marco and the Austrian backing he has have decided to peg Horner down somewhat. This also explains why it was Erik van Haren who reported on this story first. Verstappen is in the Marco camp as he made it all possible for them. So whenever Verstappen's management needs the media, they tell van Haren just like they did with the Perez-Verstappen Brazil situation. 
perhaps Camp Marco felt that Christian's eyes got a little too big for his stomach and after this he'll know his place again. The whole situation has undoubtedly done damage to his reputation, but the F1 community is a fickle bunch. If the season is 10 races old and Red Bull has won 8 of them, I'm sure there's something else to moan about and Horner's hiccup will be forgotten. I'd say the chances of Christian Horner still being around after 2028 are less than 50%. Now Dr. Marco is 81 years old and even though he is as fit as a fiddle, I can't see him sticking around for another 5 years. I feel his biggest motivation to stay was because people were edging him towards retirement and he doesn't like to be pushed. We can criticize him all we want for how he runs the junior drivers, but as it stands there are many Red Bull affiliated drivers on the grid, the sister team has a solid lineup looking at talent and experience and the big team scored the first 1-2 in the standings in the existence of the team. I agree that he should watch how he says things, but this is something I tell my 77 year old father too. But those grumpy bastards don't listen, so I take it all with a pinch of salt. Something the woke community can't seem to do, or don't want to, depending on their agenda. As for Max Verstappen in 2028, I honestly think he'll pack it in. Whether he's in a good car or not, Verstappen has always made it one of his virtues to do what he says and says what he does. I don't see him making a speech to the hardworking men and women in the factory about how he'll end his career there to then go and sign for Ferrari a few months later. He has said he has a contract keeping him at Red Bull that includes the 2028 season and I see no reason why he won't see that contract out. He hasn't dismissed going to another team, he just said it was too early to talk about it. So to answer the question about Red Bull after 2028, we can conclude that Horner Marco and Verstappen most likely won't be there. The powertrain company is brand new, so we have no idea how their engine will compare to the ones of the real car manufacturers. It could take time before they are at their level. Red Bull has suffered from low powered unreliable engines before. Oracle Red Bull Racing could be a completely different team seeing what changes are coming up. Change doesn't have to be a bad thing. Without Max Verstappen, Helmut Marco and Christian Horner, we can easily conclude that the organization will be less strong. They have done so much for that team, especially Horner and Marco, who built that team from the ground up. The Milton Keynes team may struggle in the midfield again, slowly preparing for another dominant spell. I'm here for it in any case, because one team's downfall is another team's rise. How wonderful would it be to see McLaren, Williams and Ferrari battling for titles, while Mercedes and Red Bull are fighting to be best of the rest. Those two teams have won every championship since 2010. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and join my fun little community. Doei doei! A special thanks to my channel members, your help is much appreciated. If you want to support this channel too, click the link down below.